as we're beginning to warm up in South Central, so are the waters of the Equatorial Pacific. It's been a change from the past three years. Meteorologist Joe Bartosik is here to help explain what that means for Alaska. Joe? And Melissa, as you just mentioned, we did end a three-year period of La Nina, the cooling of those equatorial waters in the Pacific Ocean. That brought a roller coaster ride of temperature and precipitation to the state. Now, in just over a month, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, is seeing signs that the opposite phase, El Nino, is developing and doing so quickly. Late last week, NOAA issued an El Nino watch. El Nino is the warming of the tropical central and eastern Pacific waters. The heat from those waters helps to fuel thunderstorms tall and strong enough to influence the jet stream pattern around the world. Climatologist Brian Brettschneider says the likelihood this occurs this year is pretty high. So if the forecast for an El Nino verifies, and, and the current thinking is there's an over 80% chance that'll happen. Initially for Alaska, there's very little impact. Yeah, so in the summers, the impacts aren't felt as strongly pretty much anywhere, or at least in the mid and high latitudes. The impacts in the summer are, are more focused in the tropical latitudes. We won't see the influence until later in the year here in Alaska. But once we hit the fall and then the winter, the, you know, the, the atmospheric circulation uh, that, is, that, is, that is impacted by these El Nino conditions or La Nina in, in the previous several winters, um, those do impact high latitudes and they, they tend to make us much cooler in La Nina periods and much warmer in El Nino periods. Looking back at climatology, there's a pretty strong signal, at least for temperatures. El Nino winters are all warmer than normal. You know, so it's just, is it going to be a little bit warmer than normal or a lot warmer than normal? Um, below, below normal winters are basically off the table. Uh, in an El Nino winter. Precipitation is always more of a challenge. Which means we could see more heavy wet snow events or cold rain events or even more freezing rain or ice events during the winter. Now, as for the rest of this spring and summer, Brett Schneider says temperature and precipitation are controlled by natural variability that occurs in the jet stream. That means, Mike and Maria, there's a 50-50 chance of seeing either warm and dry or cool and wet, or a combination of both. Oh, oh interesting. As long as you don't have a wet summer, Joe, you and I have talked about this. We have, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, well, right. take... Again, fingers and toes crossed, as Maria said Exactly. Earlier. I'll take the 50 50 <laughs> odds on a, right. on a, on a nice price. I'll tell the bookie, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe.